You ready? I was born ready, Mr. Shelby. Hit it. At the time of his death, Henry Ford had a net worth of more than $250 billion. One can only imagine how massive of a fortune Mr. Ford had under his belt before passing away, but you don't need to imagine anymore, because in today's video, we'll tell you all about Mr. Henry Ford's wealthy lifestyle and riches. Let's hop right in! The American business mogul, industrialist, and founder of the Ford Motor Company is one of the wealthiest men in American history. He lived in a 55-room mansion and owned many other properties as well. In the early 1900s, Henry and Clara Ford selected 1,400 acres of farmland in Dearborn, Michigan as the site for a new home. They would call it the Fair Lane Estate. In 1917, the couple moved into this newly constructed 55-room mansion. Henry spent an extravagant amount of money to build this peaceful respite, surrounded by meadows, woods, gardens, and the nature Clara loved. According to some articles, the property had cost more than $3 million to build, and currently, that home is worth more than $10 million despite its remote location. An estate built for Henry Ford has recently come on the market at $175 million. Yeah, you've heard that right. This oceanfront property is currently the most expensive listing in New York, Webble. Only Henry Ford's wealth could allow someone to afford living in such an expensive estate. The property is located on Jewel Pond in Southampton, and now Ford's grandson, who's the famous automaker, resides in it. Mr. Ford was a visionary. When he first brought dozens of historic structures to his 90-acre site in Greenfield nearly a century ago, he saw that rural America was changing drastically forever, and city life was on the rise. And in the midst of this, Ford had a vision of a single place where guests could look backward in time to gain new perspectives. Hence, the nation's first outdoor museum was born. These expensive structures and landmarks are the most famous tourist destinations that you'll find in the modern Greenfield Village today. These properties also include Hank's Silk Mill, Pottery Shop, Trip Sawmill, and the Loringer Grist Mill. Throughout his life, Henry had driven only Fords. From the time that Henry first drove his first invention to the streets of Detroit, and created something of a sensation, to the time when almost all the cars known to our planet were Fords. You would mostly love driving the Ford Touring Car. You could see almost any time about the streets of Detroit in his touring car. In winter, Henry would prefer an enclosed Cadillac. He and his family would also make use of a large English Rolls-Royce limousine for town purposes. This car would also come to use when there were many guests to be taken care of, or when severe weather prevailed. Clara Ford, wife of Mr. Henry Ford, drove an electric Detroit. In the years before World War I, many women chose electric cars because they would start instantly without hand cranking and had no difficult to shift transmission. Mr. Ford made sure to hide the fact that she wasn't driving a Ford, but this information was soon leaked. The Detroit model could run up to 80 miles on a single charge, with a top speed of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. This was a pretty expensive drive to afford for ordinary people in the early 90s. Clara also owned many other expensive electric cars during her life, but the names of these cars are lost to history because Mr. and Mrs. Ford lived a very private life. Pocket watches were the first mechanical devices to catch Henry Ford's attention. He made his first successful repair at the age of 14, when he removed the casing on schoolmate Albert Hutchings' watch. After that, Henry was fascinated with watches and stored expensive ones in his collection. There are less than 20 Manistee pocket watches known to have survived, one of which was bought by Henry and is now stored in the Henry Ford Museum. When Mr. Henry got rich, nothing would please him more than an expensive watch. In the early 1900s, Basel World, then called Schweizer, Rolex, released the new Day Date. It's a watch that would find its way into any billionaire's collection with just one glance. According to Mr. Ford's secretary, he owned a horse ranch which covered 50 acres, and it would host the most beautiful horses from all over the world. Mr. Ford would spend lots of money to buy horses of unique genes and characteristics. The most beautiful among them were the horses he imported before World War I. Henry Ford apparently had several boats during his life, built between 1920 and 1924. This particular one, the last of eight built, is the only one that exists today. It's also the only one to have been ordered by Henry himself. 
The engine was lifted from a Marine-converted World War I Liberty aircraft engine, a monster 27-liter V-12 producing 450 horsepower and 1,250 pound-feet of torque. Suffice to say, power wasn't really an issue. Here's where the next bit of the story comes into play. Mecham Auctions is offering this very boat, Henry Ford's former runaround, at its daytime auction over the next few days, with an expected price tag of between 1.25 and 1.75 million. Would you buy this, or a Bugatti Veyron? Ford's other main philanthropic passion was historical preservation, and he spent a lot of dollar bills on it. Many biographers have noted the irony that why would an industrialist who brought about the future be so keen on protecting history in the past? Well, we have the answer to this question. It could be because Mr. Ford was a visionary, or that he knows the value of preserving history. His interest was developed in 1920 when he restored his family's homestead in Dearborn. His first major preservation act was the Wayside Inn near South Sudbury, Massachusetts. To enhance the property, Ford even rebuilt the surrounding buildings and restored them too, at a total cost of $16 million. This tells us a lot about his preservative nature. Having been raised with little to no money may help to explain his charitable ways. In an average year, Ford would give away roughly one-third of his income to those in need. Ford also launched a few projects on his own. In 1912, he and his wife created Valley Farm. It was a 90-acre home for orphan boys. During the time of the First World War, he housed European war refugees at Outrington Hall. And in 1916, he even paid for a peace ship that sailed for Europe with 130 American representatives. He hoped to persuade the European powers to quit the war. He built a trade school in Detroit and a school for African Americans in Georgia. During the Great Depression, he paid for two work camps for boys. In his life, Two of his philanthropic projects, however, were particularly conspicuous because of both their strategy and size. The first was the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. In 1912, the residents of Detroit started an awareness campaign to build a modern medical facility. They were heard, and construction soon began, but was halted when the half-completed facility drowned in debts. Mr. Ford took over and completed the project with his own funds. He served as its first president, and over the course of his lifetime gave it about $15 million in charity. To this day, it remains one of Detroit's biggest hospitals. Ford wanted the Henry Ford Hospital to reflect his self-reliance and philosophy of work. In his hospital, those who would want to pay, would pay. Ford once explained that, There are plenty of hospitals for the rich ones. There are plenty of hospitals for the poor but there are no hospital for those who can afford to pay only a moderate amount and yet desire to pay without a feeling that they're recipients of charity. 